Morning, Bailey. Morning. It is time for our call to worship. On this day, the 15th day of the new year, we must be mindful that the Lord let us see this day with just a few minor things bothering us. But we know that Jesus sits high and looks low. For he says in Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people who are called by my name just humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hit from heaven and I will forgive you of your sins and heal your land. Our land is hurting and in deep need of God's divine healing. Appropriately, this admonition from God addresses the critical facts that the sin and wickedness in our life as a nation has direct and disastrous effects on our health. As a nation and a global community, so let's get together on this 15th day of the new year and give God a rousing hand clap of praise. I said rousing. Thank you. Can we please stand for our um, praise of worship? Oh, 
Sunday on this beautiful MLK Junior Day weekend. We thank the Lord that you could be with us, whether you are joining us in person or remotely. I just want to thank you all so much. I know what it's like with these things on, and I really appreciate everybody attending to the protocol. I'm going to try to be better. I realized last week I was on and off. Be better than that. But thank you so much for being here your presence, your spirit. I praise the Lord for you. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Lord, we thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, for your love, for your forgiveness. We thank you for watching over us and taking care of us. We thank you for being with us through all the trials and tribulations that are part of life in this world. We thank you for the promise of a better life yet to come. We ask you to be with us, to see us all and to see us each, to hear those needs in our hearts that are cried out to you, to hear even those needs we are afraid even to speak to ourselves. But you know, Lord, you know what we need to touch. We know where you need, where we need your healing. We lift up to you, especially in this moment, those in our church family and our family that are going through. Some who are in medical crisis. Some who are coping with bereavement. Some who are worried the bereavement is about to come. We ask you, Lord, to be with them. For all those who just couldn't make it, though they wanted to. For all of those who are struggling in all the ways that we struggle in this life, we ask you to set your arms around them, to pull them a little bit closer to you, Lord, to open our hearts, to inspire our compassion that we may be there for them and with them. Lord, we ask you to see this nation, this world, in all the trouble that you have prophesied we would be in, and all the turmoil that you have warned us would come from not following your way and your word. And we ask for your mercy. That you would touch leaders who are determined to roll the clock back on justice and you would move them to go forward instead. That you would touch those of us who are heirs of your great promises of love and mercy and equality. And you would inspire and lead us to live out that heritage and we ask you lord to see us in all the ways that we've fallen short and 
forgive us that you may make us worthy vessels of your grace, your love, and your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, Baileys. Good morning. Good morning to each and every person that's watching us this morning and coming into our service. We welcome you. Our first scripture comes from Deuteronomy 34, 1 through 12. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to the Mount Nemo, to the top of the uh, per, for, Pergamma, which is across from Jerusalem, I mean Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan, all Natasha and the land of Iran and Manassas, all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea the sop and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees as far as Zara. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in, in the land, in a valley in the land of Moab, opposing Beth Par. But no one knows his grave to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes, his eyes was not dim, nor his natural vigor Diminished, diminished, and the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses ended. Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hand on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. But since then. There have not risen in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, and all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt before Pharaoh, before all his servants and in all his land, and by all the, the mighty power and all the great terror which Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. This ain't our scripture reading. May the word of the Lord be blessed. Amen. Tell us stand, please. And what do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate was truth ride dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this shall come the judge to quicken the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let me see. Our second reading comes from Joshua chapter 1, 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servants of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over to this Jordan, 
and you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness, this uh, uh, Libyan, as far as the great river, the river Ephesians, Ephedrae, all the land from of the Hittites and the great sea toward going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before all before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses. So I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for this for to this people you should. You should divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you might observe to do accordingly, according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you should meditate in its days and night, and that you may observe to do according to all the, that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thus, in the reading of the scripture, please observe the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning again. Good morning. Do we have any visitors with us? Anyone who is with us for the first time or hadn't been with us in a while and just wants to say hello? Hey, Hello. what's it? Wait, wait, who is that with you? Scott? Skyler. Skyler. How you doing, baby? <laughs> you okay? Hey, you okay? Let's put that up and down and put the eye there. You okay? It's good to see you. <laughs> it's okay, man. My mom used to have to, to, have to grab my legs, pull me back down the future, so she'll turn out all right. <laughs> Well, welcome to you and welcome to everyone. Just a few announcements. Um, Wednesday Bible study by Zoom is going to resume this Wednesday. We have Bible study at noon and at 6 p.m. And again, if you don't have that link, just call or text myself or email myself or Regina. Um, Saturday, January 28th is, our, is the North Central Alabama Region Youth and Young Adult Kickoff. Um, that's going to be in Huntsville, but I don't have a time yet. Is Janice here? Okay. Um, Sunday, the 29th, it is our um, youth and young adult program here, and we will have special guests, the University of Alabama Gospel Choir. That'll be in the morning. I'm not sure about the, um, the district thing that afternoon. Sunday school is at 9 a.m., also by Zoom. Please be mindful of that. As we all know, tomorrow is the official celebration of um, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. There are several activities planned in Tuscaloosa by the Tuscaloosa chapter of the Southern Christian Leadership Council. Uh, Unity Day breakfast is going to be tomorrow at 7 a.m. at Beulah Baptist Church. Reverend Vernon Swift is the speaker. The MLK Day Parade is going to start tomorrow at noon, beginning at MLK Elementary. 
The Central High School Band will lead, the, and the drum major for Central High School is our own Kendall Williams. Main man. Um, Mass Rally will be tomorrow at 5 p.m. at First African Baptist Church, Reverend Diane William, Reverend Diane, Reverend Diana Williams, Cleveland is a speaker. Uh, there will be music featuring men of praise. Uh, see, as I've said before, we thank you and we actually continue to be mindful of our COVID protocols and, and masking. From Burt Braun Jr. Oh, from Reverend Burt Brown. Uh, thank you, Bailey family and missionaries for your Christmas gifts. Continue to keep Reverend Brown as well as Sister Mary Lucius lifted up in your prayers. Oh, today at 5 p.m. at Elizabeth Baptist Church is the Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration Event 2023 Youth First Campaign Kickoff. Um, and that is at Elizabeth Baptist Church at between two, from two to 4 p.m. today. Elizabeth Baptist Church between two and 4 p.m. today. All right. My wife in prayer, though. Also keep Sister Alice Page lifted up in your prayers as well as um, Brother Joe Page and his family. Were there any other announcements that I didn't receive? We have a special presentation today, um, Sister Hazel Smith. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Graves. So, as we know, Dr. Martin Luther King devoted his life to fighting injustice on behalf of all Americans. He didn't believe in fighting with guns and tanks or using his fists. He believed that a nonviolent means, a peaceful means, and the use of positive words was the best way to change the world. While Dr. King traveled all around the world demonstrating this belief, his major civil rights campaign took place primarily in the South and in three cities in Alabama, Birmingham, Montgomery, and Selma. However, one of his travels landed him in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on October 26, 1967, when he gave a powerful speech titled, What is in Your Life Blueprint? He told us that a good life blueprint must have three things. Number one, you must have a deep belief in your own dignity and worth. Don't be ashamed of the color of your skin. Know that you are black and beautiful. Number two, you must have a determination to achieve excellence in your life endeavors. So be the best of whoever you are and whatever you are. And finally, number three, you must commit to the eternal principle of beauty, love, and injustice, and justice. He stated, and I quote, don't allow anyone to pull you down so low that you hate them. Seek freedom, love, and justice for all. Now, in a moment, I'm going to sing for you a song that further illustrates Dr. King's belief and practice as he campaigned for our civil rights. The song is titled, I Believe This Belongs to You. It was written by three ministers who are also songwriters. And one of the ministers, Minister Esther Nichols, recorded the song somewhere between 2010, somewhere around there, I'm not sure exact. But the song tells of an actual incident experienced by Dr. King and how he responded and we know there were many violent incidents against him. So, I believe this belongs to you. I once heard a powerful story about a man who stood in his truth 
with such conviction in who he was, he would not be moved. Someone stepped out of the crowd and said, are you Martin Luther King? He said, yes, I am. And this well-dressed man spit on him. Then King took out his handkerchief and wiped the hate from his suit. He gave it back to the man and said, I believe this belongs to you. I will lift you up and do what I can do. I see your heart. I know that pain because I've been there too. I will hold you high while you do what you have to do. But I am clear who's standing here. I believe this belongs to you. I once had a powerful story I used to carry around. I thought it was you all this time that held my spirit down. But now I know the truth of who I came here to be. You are my angel in disguise and not my enemy. So I thank you for the part you played in this dance we had to do. I give you back your freedom now. I believe this belongs to you. I will hold you high and do what I can do. I feel your heart. I know that pain because I've been there too. I will hold you high while you do what you must do. But I am clear as I'm standing here. I believe this belongs to you. I give you back the love that's real. I believe this belongs to you. Thank you. There's a powerful urge to preach behind a song like that, but I ain't gone. Thank you, sister, for thank you for that. I, I did miss a couple of things I need to bring to the church's attention. February 12th, two things will resume February 12th that we, we will bring back our children's church. And you can see Dr. Jackie C. Williams, if you have any questions about that. And our praise dance team will resume um, February 12th. Practice will be after worship in the Ola Mae Thomas Center. And you, please, we ask parents to please register your children to be a part of the praise dance team. We'll make sure we got all the right information. I would like to meet with all the men of the church very briefly, very, very briefly, just right here in the sanctuary of all the brothers in the church. Uh, and some of y'all uh, are young men. Yeah, I'm talking to y'all too. I would like to meet with all the men of the church just right over here up front. 
very briefly after church. The faster y'all can assemble, the faster I can let you go. Uh, so that concludes my announcements. We're now in the hands of our stewards. Good morning, Bailey. Good morning. Happy MLK birthday. What a way we what a great way to start off Martin Luther King's birthday. Thank you, Miss Hazel. You did a fantastic job. And I think it's just very suiting that we do our kickoff uh, for our men's day 2023 today on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. He was our, he was my local, my current, my contemporary Moses. He was who I looked to, who I saw as a child, who I took example from as I tried to grow and become a young man. So today we're going to kick off our 2023 campaign on his birthday in his honor. So as I mentioned, he, I looked to him and he was always quite a shining star in my life. And as far back as I can remember, uh, he's always been there. Uh, one of the most incredible days of my life. I was not yet six years old, I guess, but I can remember it as if it was recent. The day that he was killed, I just kept asking, who died? I thought it was somebody in my direct family because all our family came together and there was so much mourning. And it just touched me that how much he had touched so many people. But something else that sticks with me from all those years, we've had Men's Day at churches for as long as I can remember. For as long as I can just about remember, it seems like we've always asked every man to please give $100 in addition to your regular giving. So I'm, I'm breaking tradition today. I'm starting a new tradition. Maybe it may be short-lived. Maybe it'll just be an incremental step toward bigger and better things. But I'm asking all the men of Bailey Tabernacle to give at least $125 toward our men's day which is february the third sunday in february which is i believe the 19th so on the third sunday of february we'll have men's day and this is our kickoff campaign and we know men's day is the kickoff for our sacrificial giving campaign we have three sacrificial giving opportunities each year and each year there's a special asking for each one men's day women's day and of course our sacrificial observance in november so please keep these things in mind but currently we're asking for 125 dollars on men's day now as usual i continue to thank you for your for your faithfulness and your obedience and your trust in, in God as you give your tithes and your offerings. At each entrance, we have baskets, have a basket placed where you can leave your gifts. But we also have electronic means. We have PayPal. We have Givelify. And you can go to each one of those on your smart device and just look up Bailey Tabernacle CME and make your gifts there. But we still also accept gifts through the U.S. Postal Service. If you'll make out your check or money order, please don't send cash. Make it out to Bailey Tabernacle CME Church, P.O. Box 3145, Tuscaloosa, Alabama 35403. And again, we're so thankful for all that you do in lifting up God's name here at Bailey Tabernacle. Now, if you will join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, we're so thankful. And we want to give you that thanks this morning, God.
We want to say thank you for all that you've done for us throughout all our lives. The things you've done that led us to this place and for the ways that you prepared us. God, we ask that you will continue to watch over us and protect us and guide us. And always, Lord, be our God. I ask you this morning, Lord, for special blessings on those of our congregation who are ill or ailing. We ask a special blessing on the families surrounding them. Bless them, comfort them, strengthen them, and guide them, Lord. And finally, I ask, Lord, that you continue to watch over us and bless the gifts that we bring. Bless them in a special way, I pray. And bless the givers and those who had the desire to give. Touch the gifts, Lord, that they may be used to upbuild your kingdom and to just serve according to your will. We give you honor, glory, and praise this morning. And thanks for your blessed son, Jesus. And in his name we pray. Amen. Whatever it is that you came into this place or into this moment with that you need to share with the Lord, we invite you in this moment to tell God about. You may come down to the altar if you are physically with us, if you feel so moved. You can bow in the pew where you are. Wherever you're joining us, safe place, you can just bow your head. But take this moment and tell God all about it. Set before him whatever it is you need to set before him. Ask him whatever it is you need to ask. Center yourself for the word of God, but enter into the conversation with your father. As the choir sings, you may come. Dark days, had my share of dark days, 
but I'm still here. Yes, I am. Disappointments, I've had so many disappointments, but I'm still here, yeah. Through it all, I through. Yeah. He kept me right here, right here, right here. I, I made it through another day. Yeah. kept me here. Let me tell you how he did it. It's by the grace of God that I'm still here today. He was always there, no matter what came my way. Been a present help in my time of need. Standing right there just to see about me. Oh, I made it. Yes, God. Help me right here. I made, it. I made it through another day journey. Yeah. God kept me here. Mm. Hey. I made it. Oh, yes. Through. God kept me here. I want everybody to just say it with me. Say it one time. Say, I made it. I made it. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. One more, one more time. One more time. I just want you to say, I made it. Oh, by the grace of God, I made it. I'm still here. I made it. I made it. Yes, I made it. I'm still here. I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. Oh, I'm still here. If you made it, just wave your hand. Say, I made it. I made it. I made it. I'm still here, and through it all, I'm still here, yeah. You know, sometimes it's all you got. How you doing? I'm still here. And if you're still here, you ought to give God some praise. Pray for me. Pray with me. We thank you, Lord, for this moment that we are still here to experience. We ask you to be with us, to be among us, to be in us. We ask you to speak with might and power and clarity, a word for us all and for us each. Use me in these next few moments. Father, make every word of my mouth, cause every meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight, but move me, Lord, out of your way. Let me hide in the shadow of your cross. Let me rest in the cleft of the rock and let all of the attention be focused on Jesus, whose name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Sometimes people can say the same thing but mean something entirely different. Like if a sister tells you, mm, nice dress, and then another sister tells you, mm, Nice dress. Same thought. Different intent. 
That phenomenon is active in the transition from the book of Deuteronomy into the book of Joshua. In this moment of time, Moses, the great prophet, had just died. And though the official mourning period had passed, Joshua, Moses' protege, was still struggling. Bailey, you know what Joshua was going through. The leader you'd followed for 40 plus years goes on to glory. And though the next season has officially begun, you are still struggling, still mourning, still trying to figure out how to carry on. Joshua was thinking, Moses, the servant of the Lord, is dead, and now I have to lead these people across the Jordan and into the land that God promised us? But while Joshua was wrestling with that thought, the Lord spoke to him and said in Joshua 1 and 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am given to you, the children of Israel. Same thought, different intent. More than 50 years ago, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was murdered. He was our drum major for justice, our civil rights icon, our leader of the struggle. He was our dreamer, our preacher. He guided us out of the Egypt of segregation and in the last speech of his life prophetically assured us that we as a people would get to the promised land been a long time. But the truth is, Black America is still mourning Dr. King's death. Still struggling. Still trying to figure out how to carry on. And as we wrestle with those thoughts, the Lord speaks to us as he spoke to Joshua. And if you listen, you can hear the collective soul of African America say the same thing that God says, but mean the same thing that Joshua said. So on this weekend, celebrating Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the title of the message is, yeah, but he dead now. Deuteronomy 34, verses 1 through 4, tells of God bringing Moses at the end of his life up, on, up from the plains of Mount Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho, and showing him all the land of Gilead showing him all the land of all the tribes of Israel as far as the western Mediterranean Sea and all the plain of the valley of Jericho all the way east to what is now called Jordan. He showed him all the expanse of what would be the largest territory of ancient Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, this is the land which I swore to give to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, saying I will give it to your descendants. And I've caused you, Moses, to see it with your eyes, even though you shall not cross over. Now, if you were to take a map and plot each of those locations, you would realize there is no way Moses could see all of that at once. I mean, just the curve of the earth would have prevented him from seeing it. But God gives a vision that is greater than the eyes of the visionary. Over the course of Israel's years in the wilderness, God had given Moses the law. And the law was not simply a set of religious rules. The law lists the principles and practices which would define a brand new culture in the world. The law laid out the structure of a society that would be able to safeguard and preserve the word of God through all of history's turmoils and millennia. The law was the outline for a peculiar people out of which could be birthed the Messiah. In other words, the law wasn't just a bunch of rituals. It was God's vision for the nation of Israel. In their four decades in the wilderness, Moses faithfully dictated that national vision to three generations of formerly slaves. And when Moses did that, he couldn't see fully what it was. I mean, the, the man you can tell when you read Exodus, the man thought that he was just leading an escape just taking a bunch of slaves north to freedom. And it was only in the wilderness that Moses began to realize that God was using him to actually construct a whole new country. In 1955, the newly appointed pastor of Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery was asked to serve as spokesman for a local bus boycott. 
That's all. Martin, just help us with this boycott. From the basement of that meeting of the Montgomery Improvement Society, Martin Luther King Jr. could not have seen that God was going to use him to change an entire nation, to change, in fact, the world. And do you think, babe, that when Willie Clyde and Kay were sitting in that raggedy old parsonage with the wind blowing through the holes in the wall, that they could see then all that Bailey Tabernacle would become, let alone all that Bailey is yet going to be. I'm telling you, they couldn't. I bet you Kay told them, you just wait till the bishop give you a decent appointment. But Damn. God gave him a vision for a CME church that would touch the community, that would have a voice in the halls of power, that would save souls and elevate the lives of prisoners and addicts and all our people on the margin. Say that, say that. God took Moses and Martin and Willie Clyde up to the mountaintop and showed them a vision that was greater than even their grand lifetimes could take in all at once. But then, Deuteronomy 34, verse 5. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his grave to this day. So yeah, Moses, Martin, and Willie Clyde each had a vision for our future. Yes. But what difference does that really make? They dead now. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 says, know this, know this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In other words, a prophet's vision is not constricted by the reach or lifespan of the prophet. In other, other words, they can kill the dreamer but the dream isn't dead. Yeah. The dream that Dr. King articulated on August 28, 1963, did not originate in the mind of that eloquent Baptist preacher. Oh yes, Martin framed the words, but the dream was born in the mind of God. The famous speech that he delivered before the Lincoln Memorial was not the speech that he had planned to deliver. His planned speech was titled, Normalcy, Never Again. The words he actually spoke are not from any one complete text, but something moved on the preacher that day. And when he came to the preaching desk, he pulled in pieces of past orations, unfolded his thoughts as they came to him. And well, he just let the spirit lead. And God told Martin to say, America has given a Negro a bad check. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. And so we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. It was the Holy Ghost that whispered in Martin's ear the words that Jesus was thinking when he looked down at his black American children and said, and so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious threats, with his governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. And every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made straight. The crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Martin spoke what Jesus was thinking. Moses spoke as the Lord gave him utterance. Willie Clyde preached as God directed. And yeah, 
they dead now. But their dreams live on. Amen. Their dreams live on in us. In the beginning of Joshua chapter 1, it says that after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, who had been Moses' assistant. And God said, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, rise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. Yeah, God said, Moses is dead now. So you pick up the vision and run with it. Yeah, Dr. King been dead. But we must pick up his dream and take it farther than even he could have envisioned. Yeah, Willie Kai gone and buried outside. But Bailey is still here. Amen. So Bailey takes up the vision, knowing that the fullness of what God has planned for us will exceed even my mentor's wildest dream. We go, and when we go, we go in the promise of Joshua 1 and 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. But, but as we move forward, as we carry the dream on, we have to be mindful of two basic rules. Rule number one, be obedient to the word. Rule number two, be strong and brave. Yes. Joshua 1, 7 and 8. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Every good thing that they did was done in accordance with God's word. And if we, if we are going to do good and even greater good in our season, then we have to be firmly grounded in God's truth. There will be options that are profitable and expedient, but require us to sin or shame the gospel. We will not choose those options. There are biblical realities that will undermine our conservative assumptions, and there are biblical realities that will offend our liberal sensibilities. We must stand on God's word even and especially when doing so is uncomfortable. God promises to us what he promised to Joshua, that if we observe to do according to all that is written in it, then we will make our way prosperous, and then we will have good success. Be obedient to the word. And be strong and brave. Repeatedly, God told Joshua. Joshua 1.6, be strong and of good courage. Joshua 1.7, only be strong and very courageous. Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage and do not be afraid nor dismayed. We need to be strong and very courageous if we're going to sustain the vision that we've inherited. We need to be strong and very courageous if we're going to walk the vision farther than the visionary himself could have walked. We need to be strong and very courageous because there are going to be forces in the promised land that will try to weaken us and corrupt us and scare us. He told Moses, who do you think you are, the fine Pharaoh, leader of the greatest civilization on the planet? But God said, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? They told Joshua, the Canaanite nations are too well established, too well provisioned, they're too well fortified. You and this ragtag army of nomads with mismatched weapons, how can you hope to stand against their horses and chariots and armies? But God said, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. They told Dr. King, listen here, boy, you just sit down because there's going to be segregation today, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. But God said, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you. They told Willie Clyde that he was out of his doggone mind thinking he could make somebody out of Bailey Tabernacle. Boy, them white folks don't want y'all downtown. You need to sell that church and move down on West End. But God said, Willie Clyde, you stay downtown and grow that church. 
have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And I know, I know. Yeah, they did now. But the dream lives on. The vision is still true. So I'm telling you the same thing God said. You be strong, baby. You be very courageous, baby. Don't you be afraid. Don't you be dismayed because God is with us. As a preacher more eloquent than I said in the closing of the closing sermon of his life. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter to me now because I've been to the mountaintop. And I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he has allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. And I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we, as a people, will get to the promised land. And so I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory yes. of the coming of the Lord. Yes. The doors of God's kingdom are open. The one thing that they all had in common that made it possible for them to achieve what they achieved was God. Different men, different times, different cultures, different places, but God made it possible. Some of you are in this moment dealing with your own impossible struggles, your own struggle for freedom from whatever it is that's binding you and holding you back from God's promise. I do not doubt that you have fought as hard as you can, but you need God to give you victory. Be strong, be courageous, but come to God now and let him deliver you from if you come into this moment and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, come now and let him forgive you and cleanse you and bring you into his kingdom. If you come now in this moment and, and you've fallen away from your relationship, you've fallen into sin, come now and be cleansed and restored. If you know that something God needs you to do, is telling you to do, and you can't see it all, but you know it's too much, fine. Trust God. He parted seas for a man who had nothing to do with but a stick. Don't you think he can save you from what you're dealing with? Is the one who will come. Is the one. Is the one. Is the one. God bless you. Amen. go if I have to go by myself said I'll go if I have to go by myself yep my father my mother or my sister or my brother and I'll go if I have to go by myself. Said I'll go if I have to go by myself. Said I'll go if I have to go 
Catch up to you later. Amen. Let me remind the um, the men of the church. I want to speak with you very briefly. So I'm going to ask all the brothers after the benediction to come down just to this front area on this side. Take care of something real quick. Let us stand. Praise God for more more blessings. Amen.
Father, may the sweet communion and dwelling and anointing of the Holy Spirit, may the grace and love of his sons, our Savior Jesus Christ, rest with you, abide in you, and be with you henceforth and forevermore. And let all of God's people say together. Amen. Send me out, girl. Fellas, fellas, thank y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. I, I, you took it all the way. You took it all the way.